Hello, this is myself, Laura O'Brien from the Irish Pagan School, and I'm here with one of our esteemed teachers, Geraldine Merkins Byrne. And uh, we're here. I'm just going to give you a little brief overview. And I wanted to ask Geraldine a few questions about the classes that she teaches for us at the Irish Pagan School. So when you come to the irishpaganschool.com home page, you can, you know, you click on anything and you'll get to the home page. And then if you just scroll down, um, I mean, maybe something in the featured courses, but they change all the time. But if you go into view all products, then what you'll see here is the searchable like category page. And this is really how you can navigate. We have a lot of courses at the Irish Pagan School. So what you can do is go onto the drop down menu and you can actually search by author or teacher. So we're going to click on Geraldine's name here. And what I was realizing is we actually have six classes by Geraldine. So we're very lucky, really. You're very lucky to have the uh, wealth of experience being taught to you here by Geraldine. Um, so what we have here on screen is an introduction to Rosk poetry, Driacht Kjol, um, Reading the Fire, Irish Traditions of Divination, Seat of Power, Modern Urban Paganism, Hexing and Warding, Two Sides of the Same Coin, and Celebrating Life and Death, uh, Authentic Irish Life Rights and Milestones. This is a real slice of you, Jer, isn't it? Like, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of like everything I've known you for. <laughs> yeah, this is everything in one handy graphic right there. Absolutely. And what would be your favorite? Like, what did you now? I know they're all very yeah. close to your heart, but they are. That's mm. a problem. It is hard. I have, I mean, the Driot Kjol and the Rosk I see is very linked because mm. primarily what I would have done my whole life is sound, sound mm. and music and word and its its use as power. Mm. So that's really that would probably be very fundamental. Um the the urban paganism one is very close to my heart because probably that's what I would practice mm. on a daily basis. So and that was probably the first time I've ever just sat down and gone, well, this is urban paganism. This is what it is for me and in Irish tradition to be yeah. in this. But that was that was actually really good for me as yeah. well as like teaching it, because it's sometimes, you know, you you get to kind of codify what you do and you get to explore what you do when you're trying to explain it to somebody else. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we then, learn by teaching like it's so it's yes. so true. So true. And then I mean, what I love is the questions and answers mm -hmm. at the end like that. I love that part of it because people will come up with things no matter how well prepared you think you are. And it will be a completely different point of view or take on something. And again, you have to you expand you learn you 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 have to and sometimes you don't know yourself what the answer yeah, is until yeah. you ask the question you know yeah yeah but I like the practical stuff as well I mean I love like any anything practical I like doing the fire reading and the divination and I like doing the hexing and the warding absolutely <laughs> and the hexing and the warding actually came from one of our other videos on the YouTube yes. channel really now it's something that we've wanted to teach at the school for a long time um but a lot of the practical stuff, you know, when we were thinking like back in 2016, 2017, we're kind of planning the Irish Pagan School. You know, we always knew we wanted it to be more than just me and John. But we were kind of going by topic and then figuring out who to get to teach it after that, you know, um, when we started. But like the practical side of things was something that we really wanted to integrate. But there was a lot of kind of theory that had to happen first, you know. <laughs> Yeah, because so many of our students are completely new to Irish culture, Irish history, you know, yeah. basics of paganism, like and everything. So I'm really excited now to be getting into that kind of depth with, you know, hexing and warding and that kind of like, you know, both cursing and protection are such a strong and integral part of Irish folk magic, Irish tradition, our, our, our festival traditions, you know. Yeah, so our culture just our culture, it really absolutely. is. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just loved it. And I love that um that we have the life rights, um, you know, that I'm one of the co-founders of Pagan Life Rights. Um, and that whole idea of us in service roles, you know, whether you call yourself a priest or not, or whatever it is, you know, like if you're 
if you're in that kind of community service role and you have the honor of facilitating somebody's life milestones, whether that be yeah. birth, marriage or death, you know, or anything in between. Um, but like just having somebody who can facilitate that kind of modern ceremony, but still keep it really, really true to our traditions. Like I just I can't sing your praises enough. Jack. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. But I would also sing your praises because none of this would happen because unless you and John had put this together. And there are a lot of things that are in danger of being lost. And it's not that you want millions of people practicing them or you, you know what I mean? But mm. there is wisdom out there in the things we did in the past there is a danger of them just getting lost and just getting kind of co-opted into the general wickedness and the mm, general new yeah. ageiness. Yeah. And if we can pass that on, if we can record it, if we can have even encourage people, even if it just inspires people to go and research these things, mm -hmm. because you can't cover everything in an hour or two hours, but you can give them the tools to go out and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the thing I love about the IPS, I really love is you're building up like a record. You're building up a record of everything that people have been exploring, mm -hmm. what people have done in the past, what mm -hmm. people are doing now in a modern sense. And the two are being linked. Mm -hmm. And that's a blueprint, you mm -hmm. know, and hopefully will remain a blueprint for people. It's so accessible, you know. Yeah. Well, when you think about the like the <laughs> laughingly call them the resources that would have been available to us, like when we kind mm -hmm. of first when we first found the Internet and all of that, you know, oh, and like everything from those those really, really sparkly angel fire websites to the Yahoo groups where I believe I first met you and, um, you know, the even back before that, the the forums and channels and all sorts of stuff and just like we have come so far. And I think actually, as you're saying it, the Irish Pagan School probably started because like, well, for a lot of different reasons, but definitely one of the reasons was I was doing the interviews on my original YouTube channel. I don't know if you remember, but years I do, ago. You. Yeah, yeah. And I was doing those interviews where I wanted to really like capture, you know, Irish people's individual expressions and experience of paganism and like that playlist is still up there as well um on the ohm academy youtube channel um as it is now but I, like i haven't taken anything down but it really opened my eyes and i think that's where a lot of the seeds for the irish pagan school actually started you know where right there yeah was, was just like wanting because it, it was never supposed to be about me or john you know and now obviously we had to you know we had to lead the charge kind of thing you know and like certainly in the beginning like a lot of the content was just mine you know and John was more behind the scenes and that flipped then and you know we're trying to kind of find a balance between that but like trying to get other teachers up and just looking at your six courses here I'm just so pleased like that we have that that value and that wealth of experience and you know the expression of our traditions because we all make it different you know we all do it different we all make it different and oh, yeah. Like whether people are pagan or not, there's so much to learn from those living traditions that we still have. There to is. It's all about you. I mean, religion changes, spirituality changes. And I, I do say this a lot when you're looking at particularly the last four to five hundred years of folk practices yeah. and traditions. There's no point in kidding yourself. These were Catholic peasants, you know, and they would have identified as Catholic and they would have been very devout in their lives. Yeah, yeah. They weren't pagan and there's no point in trying to superimpose this on that past. But that belief in the ability to, to navigate this world in a certain way, that never changed. Mm. And that is, it's irrelevant really what religion happens to be, yes. either the current religion or the one that you practice, whatever. Really, those ways, that was how people who had very, very little, managed to get through, to make life a little bit easier, to just keep everything going, to get the, the wheels turning, not to fall foul of anything. Mm -hmm. And they were much more aware of and they lived in much closer relationship with things 
that are beyond our ken you know what I mean we yeah. sit in our little boxes now and we're very safe and sound and yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they really had to rely on not upsetting things and keeping things going we can all learn from that and yeah to have that and you have you I mean I look look at some of the courses you've done like I mean Tara's course with the, the herbs and things this is stuff that is invaluable it has to be maintained it really really does and the more it can be saved and the more it can be just given to people the better chance we have that people will will find authenticity yeah yeah and like there's a big responsibility as you're saying there you know I was kind of thinking like like there's there's a guardianship role as well you know to a lot of this where we you know I mean you've heard it um we we get a lot of people if we put any kind of boundaries around how this stuff kind of can or can't be used or should be used or you know what the best practice is for authentically connecting rather than just you know putting your own stamp on things and calling it Irish when it's actually not um you know, and we get a lot of that. But when we put any kind of boundaries around it, like, you know, even to the point where like these traditions, they're not they're not closed. You know, it's not a closed culture by any means. Obviously, we're, we have a whole school about it. Anybody can take a class. Right. But there are still kind of rules of engagement, if you like, that yes. you have to respect the tradition that it comes from you have to respect the culture you have to respect the native voices so it's maybe semi-closed or semi-open you know to some respect yeah. but like you get accused then of like gatekeeping and all the rest and the idea of actually preserving this I never really thought of it in 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 oh, that, yeah. you know well, for posterity I have, like. <laughs> I have probably said this before and maybe it wasn't understood in the context mm. but I have no problem gatekeeping accuse me of it <laughs> Go ahead, accuse me, because, yeah, I am bloody well gatekeeping. I believe, listen, I'm primarily a historian mm. at her. She mm. I believe that we have to understand not what we think happened, but what really happened. Yeah. And yeah. I was lucky in my education that I had lecturers and I had people who drilled into us. There, You go look at the evidence Mm -hmm. not at what you hope the evidence will show you. And that is a life lesson, you know, for, I mean, if you look at politics, you look at anything around you, you should be looking at the reality. Yeah. When people come in and they want to say, oh yeah, I love Ireland. I love this. I love that. But I don't actually like the reality. Then you do not love us and you oh. do not like our culture and you don't want our history and our traditions are wasted on you because what you want is a fantasy now i have no problem with people having upg we all have our own personal interpretations and our own personal yeah. experiences of course but if you think that if you take anything a deity a practice a tradition anything and you say oh no that's not what it is it's this thing over here no, I have no problem with the word no, 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 it's not. No, you're wrong. You know what I mean? Like my kids do a thing which is wrong, 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 <laughs> wrong. And I do this in my head yeah. on an alarming amount of the time. When I'm, reading, so I'm just like, wrong. If you cannot listen, if I was, if I go to learn something from someone who knows something, I listen. Mm -hmm. If you if you can't do that, if the noise in your own head is so loud that you're going, no, no, but I want it to be like this. Mm. Yeah. You're not yeah. going to learn. Yeah. You know, you're only listening so you can speak, you know, you're not actually that's engaging that's with anything, you know. And that's bad in relationships. It's bad in <laughs> <laughs> it's bad in Facebook groups. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's when you know, I'm sorry if the you know the middle of my sentence interrupted the beginning of yours. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like you need to shut up for a minute but and I do I have to say I think we have to have immense sympathy with our our cousins who have emigrated who are the children and the grandchildren the great-grandchildren of people who have emigrated and I do I do but I also have immense sympathy and affinity with the person who has no DNA linked to Ireland mm. doesn't have any 
like family link or whatever but who is drawn to or interested in yeah. Yeah. and I find it ironic that it is often that person who has more respect than the people who say they have a genetic link and it drives me batty absolutely and like if you believe in any kind of like transmigration of the soul or anything like who's to say that those people don't have just oh, as much of a connection you know absolutely absolutely you know and it goes back to the teaching and the classes and building a class and presenting a class. Mm. You're trying to find a common ground so that someone watching it is could be coming to this with very little knowledge mm. or of, and I mean, of Irish culture. I mean, mm. they could have immense knowledge yeah. in their own, yeah. but, you know, or someone could be sitting there who studied it for years and mm. is very well versed. Because you have to speak to the person without the connection as much as the person with the connection. Yeah, yeah. And that is a challenge. But when you when you try to do that, again, I think it, it opens it up to everybody. And the person who thinks they know a lot might learn something actually from the person asking that what, you know, the question out of left yeah, field. Absolutely. Going, yeah. Oh, I don't know yeah. that. Like that. So even among when you're like one person is sitting there in front of a camera. And as I often say, I can talk. <laughs> I have no problem. To, you know, so I've been banging away and giving information. But it's often the most valuable bit is the students when they yeah. interact yeah. and come up with something and ask you something. Mm. Every that's where really everybody learns. You know, mm. and that's the the vibrant moment. You know, that's absolutely. The creative yeah, moment I me. love that. I love that, and I love the like. I always I always talk about approaching things with a beginner's mind you know and really especially as a teacher I think it's so important to really kind of try and reset yourself because I like I know you're probably the same as me but like studying this stuff for years and years and years like we have you know the three pillars of Irish paganism so we learn we experience we integrate but that's a cycle like that's a spiral you know and every time you finish one of those cycles you go back and you start to learn again you learn something new, even if it's exactly the same material, the same lore, the same story, oh. the same content, the same relationships, the same sites, yes. with sites, you know, every time you go through that cycle, you have learned something, you have had an experience and you have then integrated it. And those are three essential equal pillars, I think, you know, yeah. um, because without any one of those, you're, you know, your stool has fallen over. <laughs> 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 and you come back to it as a different person. I mean, mm -hmm. who I was at 20, mm. who I was at 30 or 35 and who I am at 54 are radically different yeah. people, yeah. of which I'm very glad. I'm yeah. glad I didn't remain yeah. the way I was. Yeah. <laughs> but what I understood at 20 what is different completely from what I understand now. Yeah. And yeah. this material mm. that like I absorbed like a sponge back then mm -hmm. that I would have to plow through now mm -hmm. but what I'll get out of it could be much deeper and very very different yeah. and if you're yeah. there and you go I've done that it's done I did it once I've mm -hmm. done it mm -hmm. that there's a finality to that that closes down growth and learning absolutely absolutely you have to come back to it as an, another person yeah. and then yeah. you learn more out yeah. of life and things happen and you get and then you come back to it again yeah you're a different person yeah. and yeah you know, and what you learn changes from the same pool. It'll change every time. Yeah. You know, yeah. we change. Yeah, absolutely. I Like, I find that we're in the middle of like, we're three months into a six month run of the Morrigan Intensive, which runs once every year from 2014. Like it's been running, you know, so like. I've, I've a good experience with the material now I've, I've refreshed the whole material this year but even doing that you know having to reframe everything that I've learned since 2014 everything that I've taught in the course yeah. and kind of you know put it into a, a a clearer system really was what I was trying to do this year which I think is is successful but every single year and I say it to the students every single year I'm doing the program I'm not just teaching it or you know I'm not just here to answer your questions I actually go through that work every single year. I find that it's part of like my devotion to the, the Morgan, the goddess yeah. that I work for. It's actually essential. And the things that have happened to me as part of that Morgan intensive, like have been so destructive sometimes. So 
like you know it's it's a case of burn everything down and we're starting again you know yeah. um so when we come to kind of signing people up or enrolling people in in may or june every year you know what i have to tell them is like this is because i'm speaking from experience you know this is an intense like that's why it's called <laughs> an intensive um, this is intense work. And again, you know, finding that kind of cycles again and again and again. There's some years where it's like I've never done it before, you know, yeah. and it's brand new. There's some years where I'm kind of, you know, OK, yeah, maybe like I'm I'm in a good place and I don't have a, a huge like epiphany learning to do this year. But then I'll have had those experiences. So when so when I meet somebody who does or when I'm teaching somebody who does, I know what to do, you know, but I have to approach it every single year as if it's yes. my first time, you know. Yeah. And yes. And and when you stop doing that, something will something bad has happened, if you know what I mean. Yeah, true. I if think I get thinking. I think I get slapped <laughs> if I stop <laughs> doing that. Oh, oh, you're not you you don't have to do the work now. Is that where we're at? Mm. <laughs> Let me imagine. explain to you how you can. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Well, for Let me, me take away have... everything you value. <laughs> now now will you do the work <laughs> well for me uh, my version of that would probably be amramic meditation mm. like sometimes you know because it's been such a part of my life for so long sometimes i find it's like it's almost i take it for granted it's, uh, it's grand and then that's when i have to stop that's when i have to regroup and that's yeah. when i have to start again yeah. and and really experience and as you say come back to it mm. as a as a beginner as a mm. as a starter and every time that that has happened it's because it was something i needed to learn about myself yeah. that i yeah. wasn't learning and i was glossing over because i was glib and when i you know and when you get glib in any <laughs> practice you're skating on a very thin ice yeah, surface absolutely you know? absolutely yeah, and yeah. it really sooner or later it'll come back to bite you so I have learned from experience mm -hmm. so now I stop and I come back and I breathe and mm -hmm. I start again Reset, and every, yeah. every time there's a reward I would say mm -hmm. every time yeah. you find out something about what's happening what who you are what you need to do so it's hard but mm. you know. look nobody ever said this work was going to be easy and there's so much like say within you know neo-pagan spirituality or new age spirituality that is packaged as very yeah. easy you know and it's not a promise we've ever made at the irish pagan school yeah. you know and like we had an experience where um she ended up not being a teacher for us but um but one of like a very experienced practitioner that i know here in ireland you know um she would have been uh, i can't remember whether she was taking a class or something but she was like, you know, everything I thought I knew is I have to just start again. I have to like completely go back, you know, and it was something about like I was talking about going back to the mythology and, you know, building your practice and actually experimenting and experience and to kind of fill whatever gaps are there, you know, rather than working with a system and trying to kind of retrofit fit it yeah. to Irish, you know, native Irish stuff, you know, and within the Irish pagan landscape, certainly there's a lot of that where, you know, in the, in the eighties and the nineties, we had all these Druid orders and, you know, Celtic shamanism and, you know, and those were kind of like the, the good side of things. Yeah. Like they were yeah, the best I side of things. I know. <laughs> so people were looking at the absolute shite, you know, the Celtic magic and yes. the Wita and the, the, the 12 lessons of Merlin and all that shit. And they were looking at all that and then they were seeing stuff like Celtic shamanism or the Druids, you know, the Druid order stuff. Um, I'm specifically not naming names, but everybody knows who I'm talking about. You know? And Irish people were, were so hungry, like, and, and we watched it happen. You did and I did. Mm -hmm. No, we watched it happen. We watched people try, like, take on these kind of these, these package systems and then yeah. try and integrate it into our native land and traditions you know and we can't and as you know I made quite a lot of I made people un unhappy mm -hmm. in the 90s by mm -hmm. verbalizing this yeah and like I received quite a lot of 
backlash from yeah. people, yeah. Absolutely. which I don't mind. I understand no. why. Yeah. But, and it slightly amuses me sometimes now when I see this, some of the same people and they are now fully preaching like return to the the the, the source and everything and I'm going mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> anytime you want to about anytime yeah, yeah. My I'm, I'm right here <laughs> right here but seriously though I like our culture was ripped apart a lot of things were taken from us and then there is a weird snobbery that you see particularly when you look at the 60s and 70s a kind of an almost apology for being Irish like mm. wishing we weren't Irish we were yeah. like yeah now I, w- I would admit I was lucky I grew up in a household where like being Irish is God's gift to the world mm-hmm. and you feel slightly sorry for anyone who doesn't live here like yeah. just very slightly <laughs> God help but I saw it in my friends I had friends who had say English relatives and they were like oh I'd be so embarrassed in front of them and you'd be like what mm. and you you know, people just uh we had an inferiority complex we did for many did. many years and you know um, we can buy that honestly like in fairness you know our culture was literally being bet out of us for generations absolutely and we were by our own parents <laughs> now you see well and see they did it to us and then we perpetrated it mm. we, we perpetuated it mm-hmm. and i that's why i totally understand why people literally seized on what seemed to be Irish. I mean, people went, like, they were, Golden Dawn was Irish. And you go, no, mm. that was ascendancy. That an anglo there was nothing to do with our native traditions. But you understand why people felt like, oh, here's something. Here's something mm. I can I can have. And the trouble is they were packaged and glib and easily accessible. And, our tra- and a real tradition, cultural traditions are messy and complicated mm. and nuanced mm. and difficult and require research and require effort. And yeah, you can understand, when, particularly when you're young, mm. when you're anywhere between the ages, maybe of 16 and 30, when someone goes to you, well, you can have this messy heart or you can have this lovely pack. Mm. You're going to grab the package. You're going to grab yeah. the brightly yeah. lit and it came yeah. with books. Yeah. It came with books and websites mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I understand and card decks. <laughs> yes. I you know, I understand it, I do. But as I say, my inbox is open for retrospective apologies. You know, anyone who wants to say, God, you were right, and I wish I had done the work, I'm here for it, not yeah. a problem. Yeah. That's and it. also they can take your classes at the Irish Pagan School if they Absolutely. want to do the work. <laughs> Well, they can take any class at the Irish Pagan School, I have to say, and do the work. Because mm. I think it is worth mentioning, you do an awful lot of free content. We do. Free, yeah. free, free. People could work their way through the free content, you know what I mean? Yeah. And get a lot out yeah. of it and still be doing the work, mm. you know? And I think we have then- we have something like 250 videos just on the Irish Pagan School YouTube channel now. Yeah. You know, we have yeah. podcast, we have the blog, we have, you know, and then there's there's That's my it. old my old content as well. Yeah. Plus all this there's six, I think six currently free classes at the Irish Pagan School, plus yeah. the the resources checklist, plus the 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 email course, the mm-hmm. the three pillars of Irish paganism email course. And blog content oh, and yeah, videos like this, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of this stuff is there. And, you know, I understand, like, if people curate even the classes that they buy, mm. there is enough there for them to actually do the work. You know what yeah. I mean? Get in there, get yeah. started. Yeah. Really, it's Absolutely. worth it. Yeah. yeah. But look, the truth, you know, that people always make up myths and you go, you know, reality is actually glorious. You know, mm. <laughs> have a look at the, it is. Look at the reality of our culture mm. and our messy history and our traditions. I say to people, go look at Dukas mm. and look at the same basic superstition or Pishog or, or a story even mm. being mm. retold in mm. different parishes mm. as if it happened in each parish. Mm-hmm. Look at the glory of that. Look at the sheer, like we have a, a nation divided by, I mean, oppressed, their language taken from them, their literature stripped, their practices taken, op- like and yet we managed to retain all of this stuff to, to spread it, to, to make stories out of it, to make art out of it, to make music out of it. And we kept it. Mm. Like, 
that's freaking glorious. Like, it is. It, it is, is so, and it does require effort, but it's so much better than the package. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We're amazing. Right. We're going to end that here. Um, we have, we have talked about being guardians and, you know, gatekeepers and actual relationship with, with the real traditions. And I really want to kind of end it on that note because that's what we're here for. And I hope yeah. that people do check out your classes at the Irish Pagan School. I'll put a link below to all of this, everything that's been mentioned, including Ducas. I'll remember to put the Ducas link in as well so people can actually go and do the work for themselves. Yes. So and if they take a class like another looking at the recording, they can ask me any question. Yeah. I will always answer. Like might take me a couple of days, but I will answer. Yeah. yeah. And we have um, for the students at the Irish Pagan School, uh, we have the Facebook group as well, which like we're, you know, we're all very active in. So there is a student group for all of the classes. So, um, yeah. So there's always somebody on hand to answer a question in real time, you know, so. Go for it. OK, thank you so much. And I will see you next time.